morning, friends. My name is Rob. This is my wife, Rachel. Welcome to Christ Chapel's online Bible study called The Gathering. We are so thrilled that you have joined us here this morning. Our desire is simply this, is that over the next 30 minutes or so, we want to encourage you. We want you to leave here faith-filled. We want you to feel stirred in your faith. And I want you to just be in agreement with us for great things for everyone that's viewing online here this morning. Um, we also want to encourage you is that uh, definitely interact with us. Let us know that you're there. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. And we are so thrilled to have you. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for our time together. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's watching. Lord, we ask right now that this morning that they'll hear your words being spoken, not our words, that, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence filling and flooding every home from where people are watching from. We thank you, Lord, for all that have joined us online, and we thank you, Lord, that everyone will leave here blessed and encouraged and stirred up in their faith today. So we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name, and we all said amen, amen, amen. amen. This morning, we are beginning a new series called American Resurrection, and this is week one, and we're going to be talking about stirred, not shaken. You might have heard the flip version of this phrase in one of the James Bond 007 movies, shaken, not stirred, please. Um, it was actually uh, a phrase that Mr. Bond would share um, when talking about his martini order. So we got great news for you today is that we aren't going to be talking about martinis. Uh, isn't that awesome this morning? Yes. However, we are going to be talking about what it's like to be stirred and not shaken. What it's like to live under the influence of God, His love, His word, His power, and not be shaken according to the world that we're living in right now. Really, that's the only way to live, live our lives is not shaken, not moved, especially in the season that we're living in, in the times that we're living in on this journey um, for us in life right now. Especially right now, all the craziness that we're experiencing in the world with this pandemic. Um, but we are so thrilled that you have tuned in this morning for such a time as this. Isn't that right, honey? That's right. So how, how is it that we can live in, during these times and not be shaken with everything around us really turned upside down? Normal just isn't normal at all, at least not at our house. Right? How's normal? <laughs> I would love to know in the comments how your normal is working at home. Homeschooling at home. I would love home. to know that. Man, all the craziness with husband and wives and kids being there together. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. So today we're going to talk about being stirred and not shaken. You know, we've been having these conversations with some of our friends, um, both locally and then around the world, and it seems to be the common theme coming out of those conversations is that there's a stirring, and they're, they're even using that word. I just kind of feel stirred that something, there's an expectation that something's coming. Amen. And so I was on a call the other day, it was a Zoom call with about 14 other ladies, and they were just talking about Easter Sunday and what's been happening um, in their churches across the globe and across the country. And a lot of them had just begun broadcasting their service for the very first time. And one lady was saying that they are in connection or oversee this church in Africa, and there's like 5,000 people that attend this church, it's a big church. However, because of this, they can't gather, so they had to learn how to go online. Well, last Sunday, they had 20,000 people tune in to wow. watch their services. That's four times the amount of people were being reached. Than Praise what would God. Be reached. That's amazing. There's another well-known ministry that offers a free online church platform. They have about 131, and I might not have that number right, churches that have, are part of this big network offering their service online, and they're in countries all over the world. They've had about 10 million viewers wow. on this online platform. And then also last Sunday on Easter Sunday, they had 69,000 people respond for salvation or rededication wow. between all of those churches and on that platform all over the world. And that's just one platform God. that a bunch of pastors are using, let alone what everyone else is doing. The church is, is it, we might be scattered, but we're still gathering. <laughs> and that gathering is powerful. It's like the book of Acts. You know, they went into homes. Um, you know, small groups are growing all over the country. The church is actually, one pastor's wife said this, the church is actually producing more content right now 
than Hollywood. Amen. You know, I love Hollywood that. Hollywood can't put out their movies. Your favorite show can't be recorded because there's just too many people on the sets. So they can't produce the content that's a lot of this content is coming from the church that you're seeing. And that is awesome for the kingdom of God. Absolutely. So while the world is shaken to its core, we believe that the church is getting stirred. Amen. I want to look at a scripture with you, Hebrews 12, 28, in the New Living Translation. I'll give you a second to get there. It says, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. Yes, God's kingdom is unshakable, absolutely immovable. I love that. Unshaken means not weakened or shaken. It means firm, fixed, immovable. The question is, what do you and I do when parts of our lives feel like they're being shaken? What do we do? What do we do during those times? In seasons of struggle, maybe right now with a furlough and some transition in jobs and maybe some transition with some folks, maybe they're experiencing a challenge in their health or challenges with our kids because we're all homeschooling right now and that we're spending a lot more time together as families. So there might be a little more friction than normal at home with your kids or in your relationships with marriages and stuff like that. Um, or maybe with this unforeseen pandemic, um, when the enemy is trying to throw something at you and your family, we have to go back to what we know. Isn't that right? Right. Jesus said that in this life, we will go through tests and trials. What is our go-to? What do we go back to when we feel shaken or unsettled or uncertain? Last week, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday, and that was an amazing day, especially for uh, churches all over the United States. Um, but Jesus, as he was celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples, if you remember, he gave them instruction concerning the Passover meal, telling them that it should now be called the Lord's Supper, or what we know as Holy Communion. After the meal, Jesus shared again with his disciples that he was going to be betrayed, arrested, beaten, crucified, and then die on the cross. He told his disciples that they were going to have the opportunity to stumble when this happens. Peter said, I will be the last one. I won't stumble. I won't be shaken, Lord. Isn't that right, huh? That's right. In Luke 22, 31, I'll give you a second to get there. It says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to test all of you as a farmer sifts his wheat. I've prayed that you will not lose your faith. Help your brothers be stronger when you come back to me. So Jesus was talking to Peter and told him that before the rooster crows tonight, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter said, oh, no, 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 even if I have to die, I love Peter because he just seems like he's really feisty, and I like feisty people. She so, does. <laughs> I don't know why. Even if I have to die with you, I won't deny you. I mean, he is hardcore. He is going to fight to the finish. Later the same night, Jesus was arrested, and of course we know the story. Peter denies Jesus three times before the rooster crows. And so after Jesus was crucified, and he died on the cross for us since his body was laid in a tomb. And of course, we celebrated the resurrection last week. Jesus' body was wrapped, laid in the tomb. And Mary and some of the girls went to the tomb. And in fact, in the scripture, it talks about how they weren't sure how they were going to roll the stone because the stone over a grave was like really, really heavy. Right. And so um, in Mark 16, 4 through 7, if you'll look that up with me. This is what happened. When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? You see it? So they looked at it, they saw it. He said, okay, now go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. Jesus is going into Galilee. And there you'll see him as he said to you. So let's put this all together. Those that were closest to Jesus were actually shaken. Right. Remember Peter? Lord, I won't stumble. I won't be shaken. I won't deny you. I'll even die with you. Peter, even though he was shaken, it was very important for Peter to know how much God still loved him. Matthew chapter 16, I will kind of just reference the story. Jesus, before he was crucified, shortly after he fed the 4,000 families 
with a boy's lunch of five loaves and two fish, he was meeting with the disciples, kind of recapping on the miracle that just happened. He asked them, who do men say that I am? And some said, oh, they think you're Elijah. Others say maybe John the Baptist or maybe even one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked the disciples this, who do you say that I am? They went around the table, and Peter was the one that said this, well, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was wowed by Peter's answer, and he said, Simon Peter, no one has revealed this to you except my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus said this to Peter, from now on, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So check this out, putting this together. The same guy that denied Jesus three times after saying he would never deny Jesus was, was, was willing to die with Jesus. Jesus dies on the cross. The ladies go to the tomb and are met by the angel there and were instructed by the angel to go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is risen and will meet them in town. Now the disciples are all scattered shaken and went back to sea. Why? Because they were fishermen. They went back to what they knew. You at home, what do you go back to when things are uncomfortable for you? What is your go-to? What do you go back to? Let us know in the comments section. They were fishermen. They went back to uh, fishing and going in the sea and catching fish and making some money there. But what do you fall back on in difficult times? We need to fall back on God's unending love for us. Isn't that right, hon? That's right. Let's look at Psalms 135, 1 through 4. See if you notice the pattern here. Praise the Lord. He is good. God's love never fails. Praise the God of all gods. God's love never fails. <laughs> Praise the Lord of lords. God's love never fails. Is anyone noticing a pattern here? Only God works great miracles. God's love never fails. Now skip down to verse 23. God saw the trouble they were in. God's love never fails. <laughs> verse 24. He rescued us from our enemies. God's love yes. never fails. Amen. Verse 25. He gives food to all who live. God's love never fails. Praise God in heaven. God's love never, never fails. fails. Put yeah. that in the comments. Give your neighbor a uh, elbow. High um, five. High five. Just before Jesus... Ascended to heaven, he appeared to the disciples one more time. And after they were, went fishing, they all had breakfast together. And Jesus said to Peter, do you love me more than these guys? These guys. More than these guys. And Peter said, yes, Jesus. And, and yes. And so Jesus said to him, then feed my lambs. So then Jesus asked him again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter responds, well, yes, Lord, you know I do. Jesus said again, then tend my sheep. And the third time, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? By now, Peter's grieved because this was the third time that Jesus had asked him this very same question. Peter replied, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I love this story so much because we've all been there, right? I know I've been there and maybe you have at home as well. We have great intentions, but our actions sometimes deny them. Ouch, I know that was strong. I'm sorry. But it's true. We all have great intentions, but sometimes our actions deny Jesus. We honor him with our mouth, but our actions show differently. How many of you would say, Same, Peter. Same. Man, dude, we're in the same boat. Same. Anybody else have the same? Same, Peter. I'm with you. Same, Peter. He had to go back to what he knew instead of how we felt. And I feel like that's what we need to do as well as we have to go back to what we know and who we know as opposed to how we feel or how an unsettling situation or what's around us is making us feel. God loves us so much. Interesting that the Lord asked him three times, asked Peter three times if he loved him. Remember, Peter denied Jesus three times. Love canceled out what Peter had done Love covered it, Amen. and I love that. Amen. Jesus didn't respond with a, with a bunch of ooey-gooey words. He said, then go feed my sheep. Show it. The disciples learned love by actually being and walking and being on this journey with Jesus. Let's take a look at Psalms chapter 36, verse 7. Psalms chapter 36, verse 7. 
I'll give you a second to get there at home. It says, How precious your steadfast love is, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Steadfast, not shaken. Did you catch that? Steady, stable, and strong. The disciples lived love and had a personal relationship with Jesus, and they were walking with him on a continual basis. But Jesus was asking more of them here in this moment. He was asking Peter to give, give that love. Go, feed my sheep. If you love me, go, feed my sheep. Go where I gave you. Share what I gave you. Go share the redemption. Go share my resurrection. Give love. There is an action when you feed sheep. So as you're living this life, as you're on this journey, even though you might be struggling with some things, go share the love of God with those around you. They desperately need it right now. Isn't that right, hon? Absolutely. You know, for many um, people that we've been talking to anyway, there's just a stirring in their hearts during the season. So true. So how do you keep um, things stirred up when the enemy is coming against you with both barrels? That word stirring, I looked it up, it means causing great excitement or strong emotion. Ooh. It means moving briskly or active. So there is an excitement or an expectation. I love this verse um, in 1 Corinthians 2, 3-5. through 5. This is in the Amplified. It says, I came to you in a sin. This is Paul talking here. He said, I came to you in a state of weakness and fear and great trembling. And my message and my pre preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, <laughs> using clever rhetoric. But they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through me and his power. And I love this. Stirring the minds of the listeners. So good. And persuading them. So there is a stirring. So that your faith would not wet rest on the wisdom or the rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. Yes, so good. So there is a stirring in our hearts. And that stirring comes because Jesus is calling us just like he was calling Peter, saying, hey, come feed my sheep. Do you love me? Come feed my sheep. Go tell people the good news. That stirring is for a purpose. Yes. And maybe it's not even something you can identify. Maybe it's been like this agitation you've been having, almost like a righteous anger because of all the fear that's been dominating the airwaves and dominating your grocery store. You know? Yeah, so true. And all that fear that's being projected on all the different platforms of media and content that we're hearing. Maybe there's like a righteous anger coming up in you. Yeah. There's a purpose for that. Maybe it's a strong desire to do something, to make a difference. We just had a great talk with a girl last night for an hour yeah. about a desire to help feed people in the community. I love it. God puts those desires in our hearts. And so the Lord is stirring in the minds of the listeners, us, the listeners, if we're listening, and persuading us. So why? So our faith won't rest in Google. Ooh, so our on. faith won't rest in CNN, yes. Fox News, or YouTube videos. So that our faith will, faith will rest in the power of God. Amen. In this crisis, you can't even rest on man's wisdom. Because guess what? It's not working. Two weeks ago they said, don't wear a mask. You don't need a mask. The general <laughs> public, why would you wear a mask? And now they're saying, I think the whole public should wear a mask everywhere you go. Then they were saying, wear gloves, wear them everywhere you go. And then there's other people that say, don't wear gloves, that's stupid. <laughs> um, there's other people that say, you know, uh, well, there's like six weeks ago in New York, they were like, oh, go downtown, hang out with everyone. It's good. This isn't going to affect anything. Enjoy your life. This is, you're good. And now they're saying, don't go anywhere. Don't even go outside of your house even if you do wear a mask. <laughs> and so that's men's wisdom. We can't rest in any of right. that. We're going to have to rest in the power of God. We're, our faith is going to have to rest in his power. It's so much greater. His wisdom is so much greater yes. than any wisdom that the world can offer. It's a time to know God and know his ways and hear his voice. Amen. Amen. So what's stirring in your heart during this season? 
Perhaps it's a season of metamorphosis for you. And for the church, we know it is. Look at what's happening. The church is, is coming out of its four walls and being broadcast on every platform more than it ever has been in the history of all time. Amen. The gospel is covering the earth like the waters of the sea, just like the Lord promised it would in Absolutely. the Bible. So it's pushing us beyond, maybe you're getting pushed beyond your comfort zone to reinvent the way that you live. And maybe your normal just wasn't that great to begin with, and you don't need to go back to normal. That's right. right. So, so good. I wanted to look at one scripture here in Esther, and we'll probably share more on this story later, but I, later on in, a, in another message, but I just want to share a little snippet from that. This is uh, Esther 4, 13 through 15 in the Amplified. Um, I'll give you a second to get there. Um, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, don't imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, liberation and rescue will arise for the, for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish, since you did not help when you had a chance. And who knows whether you've attained royalty for such a time as this. Oh, so good. And for this very purpose. You're alive on the planet right now. Yes. Not in the 1800s, not in the 1920s, but right now. You were brought into the kingdom, placed on this earth with purpose and for a purpose. Amen. We want to encourage everyone watching today, I want to encourage you to do this. Write this down, put it in your phone, make a reminder that you're going to take 10 minutes a day for the next week. And you're going to pray for our nation, and you're going to pray for the world facing this crisis. But specifically, you're going to ask God what his purpose is for you during this season and during this time. Amen. Because I guarantee you, he has one. Amen. Amen. So good. Turn with me to Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. This is out of the message translation. So if you have your Bible apps, um, this is God's message. The God who made earth, made it livable and lasting, known everywhere as God. Call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. That scripture is so good. Let's purpose in our hearts to learn God's love. You never learn about God's love or all that there is to know about God's love. It's an ongoing, continual revelation of how much God loves us. And as we stay open, remain teachable as believers, it's an ongoing revelation that God shows us another level of his love. And then from there, we are to not only receive God's love, but live loved. And then after we live loved, it's time to give some love or, or show some love. Show some love to your community, your, your circle of influence, your neighbors, your friends. Show some love. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. But maybe you're here today and you're hearing this and maybe you're searching for hope this morning. We don't ever like to, to, to leave our time together without giving folks at home, folks tuning in, an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here. Maybe you want to rededicate your life back to Jesus. Is that we're living in so, uh, so such different times. It's such an unsettling time. And we want to give you hope. Is that even during this pandemic, even during maybe a, a season of struggle, is that God loves you so much. And that's why we don't believe that you've tuned in by accident this morning. Is that know this, is that we've been praying for you. And we want to encourage you today is that don't put it off any longer. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it's real simple. We're just going to lead you in a prayer. We're going to ask you and invite you to pray this prayer with us. And as you do, we believe that you'll receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then we'll give you some next steps from there. But I want to encourage you is that it's not just a prayer that we pray. It's a journey that we walk together. It's important for us to walk together in this. So if you're here this morning and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior... Or maybe you're here and you want to rededicate your life back to maybe you've walked away or, or maybe some things have happened have caused you to, to no longer follow Jesus. But today, you're like, hey, I want, I want to rededicate my life back to him. If you would repeat this prayer after us, friends, let's pray together. 
Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross for me. And that you shed your blood. And that you said shed your blood. I ask you, I ask to you forgive me of my sin. To forgive me of my sin. I receive you now. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Help me to live a life. Help me to live a life that honors and pleases you. That honors and pleases you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. If you have prayed that prayer with us here today, we want to encourage you. We want to put some resources in your hands. You know, we want to journey with you. This is something that you're never, ever meant to do alone. So we want to encourage you. Is that let us know in the comment section if you prayed that prayer with us today. Also, we want to put some materials and some resources and encourage you in your faith um, in the Lord. So if you would go ahead and email us at info at ChristChapelFL.com. We want to make sure that uh, we put those resources in your hand. Once again, welcome to the family. You know, we'll be digging more into this topic next week of an American resurrection. We can't wait for you to join us. I wanted to invite you to start a watch party with your friends. Yes. Maybe you've got some friends who don't attend a church or are needing some encouragement. Um, have them join a watch party with you. You can just click on that little box while you're watching online and invite anyone you want to invite. This week in this message, we threw out a 10 minute prayer challenge to you. And we wanted to encourage you to do that every day. And in that, we would love to know what you're praying for. Yes. And then how we can be praying, how our church family can be praying for you. So let us know how we can be praying for you. You can email us at info at ChristChapelFL.com and just let us know how we can be praying for you. We wanted to also mention that if you haven't been a part of our 30-day prayer challenge with our families, on social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram, we're covering our families and we're covering our community. And we just wanted to, do, to encourage you to be a part of that. You can jump in now and just pray whatever topic we put up there. We've been covering different subjects every single day. We're about halfway through our 30 days. So jump in on that and be a part of that with us. We also wanted to let you know how you can find us and how you can follow. Yes. And that's it. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Christ Chapel FL, all lowercase. So that's our handle at Christ Chapel FL on all three of those platforms. And we also have a YouTube channel. You can find that by searching for Christ Chapel Florida, the entire word Florida, on YouTube. And there you can subscribe to all of our videos and get caught up and stay in touch with everything that we're doing. We would love to have you join us. Yeah, subscribe and invite your friends. At this time, we're prepared to uh, worship the Lord with our giving. And uh, we are so thrilled and so thankful for your continued generosity and your faithfulness and your tithes and in your offerings. Um, this week, we actually had a, a really neat situation come up, um, is that we've partnered with some local um, stores here in the community. And that through those local partnerships, they can call us anytime. And this week, that happened. And we had a, a what could have been a big problem turned into a great opportunity, is that uh, we got a whole bunch of baked goods and breads and pies and, and food and um, it was extra on top of what we normally get. And it was pretty awesome because we didn't really know how we were gonna get this distributed. And, um, but we just made a couple of contacts and we were able together as Christ Chapel, we were able to feed how many families this week? At least 30. At least, At least 30, 30 families this week. Wow, that's amazing. And then we also um, each week partner with the Orlando Rescue Mission and, and send food to them as well. And then several firehouses, which has been amazing. We love our first responders. We celebrate them. We pray for them. We pray for you all. Thank you for joining us. Um, and, but they love to see us coming with pies and goodies and cupcakes and cookies. Um, we are, I tell them all the time, I kid, I said, we are not responsible for that extra pound or two. Don't hold it against me. But we, we love you guys. Thanks for partnering with us. But it's a great opportunity to be able to partner in the community. And we really see this as a growing need in our community here, especially um, uh, in the Disney area with some of the different layoffs and furloughs and the unemployment situation is that there's opportunity all around us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So what we've done as a church family is that we've actually have purchased food and purchased goods um, to be able to be a blessing to people as needs come up. So thank you for your continued faithfulness 
with your tithes and with your offerings and with your generosity is that know this is that we're making a difference right here in our community and that we're being the hands and feet of Jesus. But I want to encourage you. Maybe you've tuned in. Maybe you have a need. We want to encourage you. You know, we're not going to post this anywhere, but if you have a need, we're going to be discreet about it. And maybe you need some food. Maybe you've had a situation happen. And email us at info at ChristChapelFL.com or if you know of somebody, let us know. Email us as well. We want to help and assist with food and in any way that we possibly can. But thank you for your faithfulness and giving. We love you and that we're praying for you. Thanks for joining us. Honey, would you close out in prayer? Sure. Thank you guys again for joining. Let's pray. Father, I pray for each person under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord, that they were brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that they're here on purpose for a purpose. And I thank you, Lord, that that purpose is being discovered more every day. Lord, we pray for provision for every person under the sound of my voice that you would provide for every need, both spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally, thank you. that every need would be met through you. I thank you, Lord, that we will live our lives stirred and not shaken, yes. that we won't be shaken by the reports that we hear, but we'll be stirred to live our lives loved and to give that love to others. I thank you, Lord, for blessing each person that is listening today and causing increase to come to their door. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. Notice that we love you and that we're praying for you.